All right, so right now we're going to try working the other way. So instead of me giving you an equation and asking you to draw the line, I'm going to show you the line and ask you to tell me what the equation is. So what our goal is in the end okay, is to get something that looks like this. Okay. So to find the y-intercept and the gradient, fill it into the equation, and we have ourselves an equation of a line. So we can go through a little bit of a process to get that. All we need is two points. Two points is all we need to get the equation of a line. First thing you need to do is to figure out what those two points are and state their coordinates. You might have to look at the graph and figure out exactly where the line crosses the grid to get some coordinates, or those might actually be given to you already. Once you've got those two coordinates, you're going to start by figuring out the gradient. So using the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus y1. Remember that's really just the rise over the run. Okay, so we'll get the gradient. So we'll have half of what we need to figure out then the constant value. We need to substitute in the gradient, so we'll fill it in here. And then we need to use one of the other points. Okay, subbing it in for x and y to figure out what the a is. There is a little formula you can use, okay? Or you can just use your standard formula and save memorize another one. I'll show you using both strategies. So here we go. Let's work through an old exam question. So state the equation of the least squares regression of the scatter plot below. So that's this guy. Fill in the blanks to three significant figures. Okay, remember that's slightly different than in decimal places. So we need to figure out the weight in terms of the length by figuring out the constant and the gradient. So first we need to look at our graph and find two places where it crosses the grid exactly. So notice right here, okay, although the line does to actually go through a point, it does cross the grid exactly, so that gives us a great set of ordered pairs, and then it does it again up here, okay, where it crosses right through the grid. There's a point fairly close, but we're going to use the grid because that's where we can see very clearly. So step one, state the equations of the points. So the first one, the x coordinate is 31, the y is 300. So 31, 300. And okay, this one, the first coordinate is 35, and the rv is 450. So we're going to use those two points to work through. So first thing we need to do is figure out the gradient. Whether you want to use the symbol B or M, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which point you call point 1 and 2. All that matters is that you label your X and Y correctly. So it's alphabetically, X is always the first coordinate. So we now have y2 minus y1 is 450 over minus 300 over x2, which is 35, minus x1, which is 31. So that's 150 over 4. If possible, reduce. We get 37.5 as our gradient. Okay. So right now, because it's already given the equation for me, gradient, remember, gradient goes in front of the variable, so it goes here. Okay, so I've got half the pieces, now I just need the second piece. So right now we've got weight is equal to some unknown plus 37.5 times the length. Okay. Now I've got two points to choose from where I can actually fill in the values for W and L. So W for the first point is 300 corresponding with a length of 31. So that gives me that 300 is A plus 1162.5. To figure out what A is, subtracting from both sides. To get negative 800 
and 62.5 is equal to A. Okay. So what we're going through here is a bit of a process, basically summing in what we already know um, to get through a value. So I can actually fill in now that this is, my pen's a little bit too big to fit here, but we'll try, negative 862.5. Here's your alternative method for figuring out the y-intercept. You can use the formula, and it just means you have another formula to have to look up. y minus y1 is b, or the gradient m, x minus x1. We put in a point in one of those, so again, just like we did above, my first y is 300. My b is 37.5 times x minus 31. So I get y minus 300. Should get the exact same thing here. Using my distributive law to multiply into both pieces. Okay, now I'm nearly there. I just need to add the y1 over. Okay, adding that, you get the same thing as before, negative 862.5. Okay, so there's our y-intercept, our a value. Again, it doesn't matter which strategy you want to use, whether you want to sum it into the equation y equals a plus bx, and just solve that way, or using this formula, which again, you will have to either memorize or write down somewhere. One more thing to look up, slightly more time consuming, um, summing in one of the points and rearranging. So it really doesn't matter which method you use to find that last value. Fun fact, you can do a check to make sure it works. So let's just double check that this formula here actually works for the points that we have. Okay, so what, okay, what we have is that weight is negative 862.5 plus 37.5 times the length. If we let length equal 31, so if I let length equal 31, that means I should get 300. So, W equals negative 862.5. So this is just a check. Times 31. You put that into your calculator, you do get 300. Yay, we're happy. Our equation does work. So you can do that quick double check to make sure that you've done that correctly. But again, the process is pick your two points, use that equation to get your gradient. Once you've got your gradient, use either the standard form or the formula you need to memorize to find the missing value. Okay, so to find the y-intercept, fill in all the values. Again, it's super, super important that you recognize the gradient is what goes in front of the variable. It doesn't matter what order they're in. What matters is that those two go together. Okay. So that's how we find the equation of a line given two points.